Welcome back, guys, to the ninth ever episode of the Galgo Games podcast. We're close to ten now. Um, I'm Zach. Today we're joined by Rob. Hello. And Owen. Hello there. So, uh, General, General Kenobi. Kenobi. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll start off with. There's not much. There's not much updates regarding us on the channel. Is there really? Everything's going same as always. Um, I think we haven't got anything new lined up this week we're just going to go same as always which is fine um yep. but we do have a new game to open the podcast this is a game that i've seen for in other podcasts and I'm now stealing because it's funny and right. this game is uh pokemon or animal hmm. and basically i've got like five or six um <laughs> five a list of five or six things and what they are is they're either pokedex entries or a description of a real life animal and so what okay. i'm going to do is i'm going to read out the um the description and basically, you have to guess whether it is a Pokemon or an animal. You ready? Okay. Do you, like does this. everyone understand the yeah, game? Yeah. Are we like yeah, buzzers or, or is no, it? No, like... both. You can both make a guess, and then I'll reveal. Okay. 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 So the first one reads: the punches are so strong that they create shock waves that can break glass and liquefy smaller blank. I've blanked that word because it's either animal or Pokemon. Who would give it away? I I think I actually know what you're describing here. <coughs> So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to say animal. I'm thinking it's oh, like it a kangaroo. But then, kangaroo. but then it says their shockwaves can liquefy glass or whatever it was. The Liqu- shockwaves can glass. break glass oh. and liquefy smaller blank. Liquefy smaller yeah. animals. I, I, or... I think I've read something like this before. I'm going to go Pokemon just to dissent from Owen because I think it could be either. Do, do I get bonus points if I actually get it the animal? Sure. If you want to now, Rob's now Rob's picked. If you want to, if you want to take a guess at yeah. an animal, I, I think it's a mantis shrimp. Okay. So Owen is correct. It's a mantis <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> yes. So Owen <laughs> gets two points, and Rob is on zero points. Nice. Their punches can liquefy other animals. Yeah, dude. Oh, honestly, they, look at the um, like look them up on YouTube. They they they're ridiculous. Can we have a clip of this on in the background of the podcast? <laughs> yeah. On, yeah. Try, if you can, try and get a clip. Of, of one right. of them punching. Okay. It's, That's it's mad. mad. Okay, All right, next one. Even if it loses one of its heads, it can live relatively problem-free. One of its heads. I'm, I'm going saying Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. You're going Pokemon? Yeah. yeah. Anyone want to guess the Pokemon? It's the bird Pokemon with three heads, is it? Do- I, I, yeah, I would, I would say Doduo or Dodrio. Dodrio, yeah. Okay, so it is a Pokemon. Uh, so you both get one point. Unfortunately, you were incorrect with the actual species of Pokemon. It's Vanillux, the ice cream Pokemon. Oh my! Really? <laughs> Why would that be its description? It's Are its heads cream. like different scoops of ice cream? Yeah. Yes. Class. That's <laughs> stupid Pokemon. Is that from X and Y or black and white? Oh, black it's and one white. of those. It's black. black and white yeah, of course it's black and white. Of Cl- course it's. <laughs> so that puts Ro- Owen on three points. Rob on one point. We've got four left. Its stomach's digestive juices can dissolve any kind of poison. Um, I, it's got to it, be this is an animal. It's an animal, and I know which one it is. I think, but I've forgotten it. It's like a platypus or something. Platypus. Yeah. Okay. So some okay. weird animal like that. Are you locking that in, Rob? I'm not locking it in based on what you said. Platypus, but I can't think of the other one. So yeah, I'll go with that. If, if I'm going to guess at the species, I'd say like a Toxicroak. It's a Pokemon. Okay. So, it is a Pokemon. No. But not Toxicroak. So there's, one point, there's one point for Owen. It's actually a Snorlax. What? Yep. I did not expect Snorlax can that. apparently uh, digest any kind of poison. Uh, any chance that you have what generation Pokedex entry that's from? I do not. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can maybe, I could get that later on, but yeah. not right no now. No worries, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that puts Owen on four points. Yep. Rob still behind on one point, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's true. You can, you can still claw it back, Rob. Yeah, you can get six Next points. One. Its bite ignites the flesh of its victims. The wounds often lead to fever. That's got to be some kind of spider in it's real it. life. I, I think it's a real animal, and I want to guess it's a Komodo dragon. Interesting. I think it's a daddy long legs because daddy long legs don't have a teeth. Daddy dude. long legs. Yeah. They cut, they, no, they, no, they, they, no. They, they do, just, but they're not sharp no, enough no, to no, pierce no. human skin. 
Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. But they, well, they, 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 they're not sharp enough to pierce any kind of skin. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, but, but I have if they do, though, got, they can. They've they got can like do the some strongest. Uh, they've got the strongest like venom known in the universe, or something like that. But they just can't use it. I reckon they can okay. use it on some things. So, you, did you both guess animal? Yeah. Okay, so it, it is an animal. Nice. Uh, you were incorrect with the type of animal. It's actually a fire ant. Ah. Uh, yep. Okay. It can uh, ignite the flesh of its... Fig- I assume when they say ignite, it means just like... Heat it up. Make not it actually, very hot. Yeah, yeah not, not actually set fire. it on fire. <laughs> yeah. <Bite. laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be sick, though. All right, so, so that might put Owen out of reach of Rob at this point. Owen needs to get five, nothing five, wrong, two. and I need to get... Two Both. bonus. Yeah, two bonus. Okay, this next one. It is so dense, while it's running, it forgets why it started running in the first place. <laughs> I'm guessing Pokemon, and I've got a decent idea which one it could be. Okay. It's a Taurus. That's what I think as well, the Taurus. A Taurus, okay. Is that locked in from both of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it is Pokemon. Not a Taurus. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now, in the spirit of the game, because it's, let's just say, let's just say, if Rob gets this Pokemon in the next guess, let's give him one more guess, Owen. Okay. Then he can get he can get three points for this, which should I think Make, allow him yeah, to tie yeah. up okay, next. Yeah. yeah, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So Rob, you have <laughs> one more guess on the Pokemon that this could be. You're only allowing it because you know I can only remember Pokemon from Gen One. Well, that um, wasn't it's actually so dense. While on a run, it forgets why it started running in the first place. Dense as in big or stupid? Stupid. It sounds like stupid if it forgot why well, it started it, to run. Snorlax. Not Snorlax. Um, the pink thing. I forgot what it's called. Slow, s- slow bro. So, do you slow really bro? think Slowbo runs? Well, I think it's Also, stupid. it's a psychic type. So I'm pretty sure it's not that stupid. It's definitely stupid. You locking in slow, bro? I'm locking in slow, bro. Okay, and that's the game then, because it's not slow, bro. It's oh. ride on. That's that's good. I didn't. Okay, I wouldn't have yeah. thought that they were stupid, to be honest. Yeah, apparently <laughs> so. <laughs> According to the law. Yeah. Or All the right. Pokedex, at least. Okay, we've got one more. We'll play it. We'll play it just you know as a friendly. This cool. one says, the bill is also equipped with sensory receptors that can detect electrical signals, which allows it to hone in on prey. I'm going back to platypus. It's an animal. This is the platypus. Okay. Yeah, I would say animal as well. Have you got a specific guess well, on animal? My, my, I, the first thing I was thinking was platypus, but I, it feels like I'm just stealing what Rob's saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer is animal. And it is indeed a platypus. Yeah. I knew I knew one of them was going to be a platypus. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that they could uh, detect electrical signals with the bill. They could do a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. They're Strange not, creature. They're, they're like aliens. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Interesting game. The first ever winner of Pokemon or Animal is Zoe. Congratulations. Woo! Maybe, I think this should be a recurring thing every now and again. Yeah, I quite it's, like it's it. A it's fun, a fun yeah. segment. All right, so we'll we'll move on to some more like actual important stuff now. We'll start with some news, and the first thing that I want to talk about is some rumors that um, the Master Chief Collection is coming out on PC. So one, basically, this came from Reddit. Um, some like some guy posted, "I'll buy the first three four three employee that comments on this pizza if Master Chief Collection for PC gets announced during the special announcement this month," and then basically a a 343 employee commented on Reddit saying what kind of pizza are we talking about? As in, you know, like he's teasing it. Yeah. And then he tw- he did also tweet out a pizza emoji. So this, to me, um, as, as uh, with this like blurred out image that was also tweeted, pretty much confirms that it's coming to PC, right? I'm looking right. at the image and then the, the subsequent D yeah. code and that's absolutely... Is Halo 3 in the part of the Master Chief Collection? Yes, why wouldn't it be? Yeah, it is. I, I, I just Halo. didn't know. I thought it was one and two remastered. No, uh, I, think I hope it's so. Like all of them. I hope so because uh, I'll never be on the podcast again, and I'll just be playing Halo Three multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are great games. I I love every Halo game I've played. Did they come with the multiplayer, the Master Chief Collection ones? Uh, I'm remember. sure it did. I think I'm pretty sure it did. 
I hope so. If if we can play Halo Three multiplayer on PC, then that is the end of anything. Yep. I would immediately buy it. Do you think this will sell a lot? Yes. I hope so. I don't know though. I think it will. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a huge audience for it, right? But you would think that a lot of people would all already have it on Xbox if they were that bothered. Yeah, well, Halo 3's never been on anything but Xbox. 1 and yeah. 2 have. And 4, people weren't that interested in when it came out, I feel. Or at least after it came out, anyway. But with 3 coming to something other than Xbox, people will go mad for it. Yeah. If it's something that we're excited about, there's got to be other people that that feel the same way. But man, I hope we can get Halo 3 back. Some jewelry and needle is away. Imagine Sorry. if they actually added Language. it in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. If it was just a feature now. And we could just pretend that it was always in the game. That would be incredible. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. That's probably going to be at some point this month announced. Which is great. That would be cool. Yep. Uh, not much else to talk about that really. So we'll just wait and see. Uh, next up. Um, some some sad news for uh, fans of Valve and Dota. The guy who basically designed, or was the lead designer on Artifact, has been laid off with like thirteen other people or twelve other people mm-hmm. from from Valve. Uh, basically, I assume this is because the Artifact is bad. I don't. And no I don't really know if it's it. necessarily bad. It just wasn't what people were expecting, and yeah. it's not performed well. Like. I think somewhere in the article it says it's been having like 600 users um, concurrent. Yeah, average concurrent, yeah. less than 600. Wow. Which is which is awful for a game that is all had like as much money put into it as that one did. Yeah, and there's like so, Dota as a sort of IP behind it. Yeah, so it, it's not performed anywhere near what I think they were expecting. So Yeah. yeah there's it, a lot of talk about it being sort of like pay to win. I don't know, I've not played it, so I well, can't it's comment. Well, like, their whole like um trying to think of the word the business plan behind it and how players unlocked new things in it i think it was more of a cash grab than anything yeah so i don't necessarily know if that translates to pay to win because that's that's a sort of like a weird thing with card games it's like it, you've got to buy the card yes but then it's also buying the card would mean nothing if you don't know how to use it so yeah, it's, it's yeah. It was the same with like Magic: The Gathering. Like there were some Magic cards that were ridiculously expensive, but just because you had it in your deck doesn't mean that you win by default. Someone who had like a yeah. five pound deck beat someone who had a three hundred and fifty thousand pound deck. Like if they just were better at Could the be game, good. yeah, yeah, I can see that. That's, I just don't know. Go on, Rob. I was say, that's always been the weird thing about card games in general is like it's not they're not priced based on how good the card is. Like they just artificially like make the coolest looking cards rare, and it's like when in print it was still artificial, but now it's like on a online. Like there's literally nothing stopping them from just upping the spawn rate, but that would make it cost less. So, like, yeah, yeah. We also yeah. it a lot of it's decided by the community about what actually makes a good card. Like yeah. it, the, what they could. There could be rare cards, like not often printed, that just don't fit into any deck, and so are worth nothing. But mm. you might have, and then again, you might have a card that's really common, that's one of the more expensive common cards because it just has so much synergy with loads of different um, decks and playstyles. Yeah. So it, it, it's a very, it's a very weird thing. And I, I see what they were going for. They wanted to have um, a kind of card game which was close to a real life card game, um, mm-hmm. but I. I think that was where it failed ultimately. Like it just, yeah, they just couldn't. Um, what's the word? They couldn't consist it. I guess. Was it was there ever space for it for another card game like this with Hearthstone and Magic: The Gathering, etc.? There is, but not if you charge up front for it and then expect people to pay for packs and cards afterwards. Yeah, but then because that was the difference, wasn't it? Yeah. It was you charge up front. Yeah, and well, there's other games where. Like these are the Magic the Gathering games where you they have they follow the same sort of um business model where you buy the game and then mm-hmm. you can buy p- packs or whatever in game. Um, yeah, but not as a new IP. Whereas you ha- w- w- well Yeah, I suppose. There is that as well. It was always a risk, 
going for that sort of model for something that mm. no one knew anything about, which it probably would have suited what, like what Hearthstone did. Hearthstone was a bunch of guys. I think it was a load of grads or something. They were all apprentices. They just thought, oh, we'll just make a, a game. And then there was like, oh, that that's actually good. But they didn't know yep. they didn't know how well it would do, so they just they just threw it on for free and hoped it picked up business, and it did. Um, but it was quite, I guess at that point it was re- it was fresh, it was new, no, it, it had not really been done to that sort of scale before, and it had a lot of um, things going for it because at the time when it came out, World of Warcraft was actually popular. Do you think it's weird how there's no like sort of esport? S- scenes. I might, I might be completely mistaken, but I never see like the Hearthstone. Hearthstone massively up there the, anymore. The, there's a at lot, least, at least regularly. The, there is a lot. It, it just seems like nothing happened for this game when it, it came out. Like there was no real talk of it. Which one, Artifact like, or surely, Hearthstone? Um, Artifact. Oh yeah, I didn't like, hear anything for Artifact. You would think that Valve, who put on like the international etc. every year, would would do some sort of big opening event for the game. Get some pro Hearthstone players or whatever to to have them, and maybe they did, but I didn't see it. And I th- yeah, I think there was like, a lot of things on the internet. There were sponsored streams and stuff like that, like people were getting paid to play it um, for a bit. But I don't. No one stuck around after it because it just wasn't. I don't know if it, to say it wasn't good is fair, but it just wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> just wasn't. Yeah, just wasn't good. I don't know Jump. another way. I don't know another way of putting it. Just like as an aside, Hearthstone's 13th most viewed on Twitch at the minute in front of okay, Destiny so 2, Overwatch, Devil May Cry 5. Is in behind okay, or in so front of? Fine. In front of. And Magic's so, like 20th. So there's an where, audience and, well, and where's Artifact? Oh, I don't have <laughs> enough time to scroll through, mate. <laughs> It'll be nowhere. If there's only 600 people playing the game, how many of those people are streaming it? Uh, well, a, well, yeah, yeah I suppose. Well, I'd imagine that if you are the the top player of the game or the top streamer, you'd still have a few watchers. Just because there's only six hundred yeah. people playing doesn't yeah. mean that. Uh, six, yeah, six hundred people playing doesn't mean there's less people watching. So there's people two hundred people. No, uh, two hundred and forty ish people watching on uh, Twitch. So nearly that half the amount of players. Way down the list. <laughs> 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 Almost half the players are just watching it. Yikes! Oh well. So I, I guess does that mean this game's dead now? I, I don't know. Well, never write I, I th- off. Some yeah, somewhere in this article, I see. I remember saying that it doesn't mean just because they're laying off these uh, developers and creators or whatever designers doesn't mean that they've like completely yeah. shutting it down. They're not forgetting about it. So they've probably got some sort of game plan. For the game, yeah, to change it around. But yeah. what that is, um, if it'll make an effect, if it's too little, too late, well, time will tell. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, commiserations to those who lost a job. That sucks. But I guess if the game doesn't perform, what can you do? Yeah. All right. We'll move on. Uh, we're going to talk about something a bit different. Uh, the fact that Microsoft are rumored to be launching a digital-only Xbox One in the next couple of months. So basically, this is just a Xbox One without a Blu-ray drive. You would assume that this would be cheaper because yeah. it has less parts. People, this article here that I'm saying from uh, Furret uh, basically said that, written by Brad Sams, that it could be as much as $100 cheaper. Oh, no, $200 cheaper, I'm afraid. That's good. If if you're not having a, um, a Blu-ray drive, I expect it to be a lot cheaper, right? Well, you've you've got to get those people in who are thinking I can't buy pre-owned games and I'm going to have to buy every game at essentially full price because stuff oh doesn't God. drop on the e-store for. That's what years. this is for. Do you remember that um, video when when it came out? Like, oh, you won't be able to trade your games with your friends, and then the PlayStation brought that. Here's how you yeah. borrow a friend off a game yeah. on PlayStation. The classic. Yeah. 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 So this is what that is. It's just like we still don't want people so it like yeah. I, yeah. This is just a it's just a cover a front for that. Yeah, it's not but a convenience not, thing. No, they they're not do, doing it to make to save money. They're not they're not they're doing it to be spiteful. Do you think do you really think so? I, I think there's a market for this, this there, Yeah, there there will be a market for it, don't get me wrong, but this is their way of getting around what was what yeah. it, it's like oh forget about what we tried, but here look, we've got a diskless console. If they normalize 
going straight to the e-store rather than buying pre-owned stuff, then they can absolutely like just stop making disc consoles and force people into that, which yeah. would be fine if stuff depreciated at a reasonable amount. But a year on, they're still selling stuff for 50 quid if, plus. Yeah, 50, yeah. 60 quid. Uh, well, I think Sea of Thieves is still 55 or something like that. Yeah. So so apparently there will be a, a disc-to-digital sort of trade deal. So if you do have a disc for a game, you can go into like a, a participating store and, and get a code for that game. So but I don't know how long that would go on for and what games that could, like, it'll probably be very, like, specific. Like, I don't think, like, two years later you could pick up, like, a pre-owned copy of Skyrim for two quid and then go and get a disc code yeah, yeah. for it. How, how are they going to do that? Also, another I'm really sure. another really bad thing about this is, like, the, the hard drive space for that is going to be needed in this is going to be huge. Otherwise, you're going to have to be constantly deleting, redownloading, deleting, redownloading. It's probably going to be at least one terabyte, right? Well, one terabyte, yeah. that's what? I don't know, 10 games? <laughs> this uh, Gears of War level, it's about 8. Well, yeah, Gears of War's like 160. Like, and Sea of Thieves, well, Sea of Thieves actually got a lot sh- uh, smaller recently, didn't it? it went from, assume... It went from like 80 to 25. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to assume that they're going to let you put your own uh, disk drive hardware in, like um, how Sony does. Disk drive or hard like, drive? Hard drive, sorry. Hard but, drive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, probably, but then that's like... Oh, if you want more space, go yeah, buy go your buy own. It. <laughs> yeah. it, They'll probably offer an external one like they did with the 360. Do you remember when it was the 360 when they offered the external uh, HD DVD player? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. But yeah, I mean, this is all in like the sort of rumours that the Scarlet, the, um, the next-gen Xbox console, they've not decided yet basically whether it will or will not have a disk drive. I think the correct way is to maybe offer both. Yeah, you've got. To I don't do know. Both. Obviously, for for price, I don't know how manufacturing and whatever. But if you could offer one version that costs more with a disc drive and one that's cheaper without, that's probably a, that's how I would do it if I was yeah. maybe in a dream world. Because you're looking to get as much market share in people having discless consoles, so you can control the market of resales or not resales, but just buying all the games. Yeah, because I pretty much only buy digitally now obviously on pc and mostly on playstation yeah. i just buy digitally just because it's easier yeah I'm, I'm happy to pay like 10 pound extra just f- to be for it one to be available at midnight and it, two it, i don't need to go and get it if i'm buying but, something new i always go digital but if it's an old game i'll just get it on amazon because oh yeah, it'll be way cheaper yeah of course which you do lose unless like you said like unless it becomes like steam used to be where you get huge sales all the time in which case, then, sure, go where I had. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even mind if they didn't do huge sales and just dropped it by, like, you know, a certain amount, depending on how many people are still buying it. But it's just, there's on especially on PlayStation, I can't say it's the same for Microsoft, but there's some games on there that have been on for ages that I can't imagine anyone buying that are still ridiculously, like, priced. And I'm like, I wouldn't pay 30 quid for this on Steam. I'm not going to yeah. do it on PlayStation just because I have to. Mm. We'll see. I mean, this is apparently getting announced very soon, so we'll know. Yeah, I like, <laughs> like it for the um, you know, the Xbox Game Pass thing. It's pretty good for that yeah. because yeah, then you 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 don't. Oh yeah, you just pay monthly subscription and you just get your games and stuff like that. That would be great. Yeah, so, so great so if that was bundled in for like a few months or a year or whatever. That, yeah, that, that could be it. That, yeah, I see. I see that actually being a thing. So like, yeah, you get one month trial or something like that. Well, yeah, like, these days it's probably games, bit, don't you? On that, yeah, I remember when like Xbox Live, you used to get like a one month trial when you made an account, and then yeah. they moved it down to like fourteen days, then seven days, and three days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. It'll probably be something. I don't know. Seven day trial sounds reasonable. Um, for like the first account on there or something like that, and if you if you've already got it, like you might they might offer like at one of the games as a permanent unlock or something. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. And if they announce it, I can see no one hating that. Yeah, because um, you're right, Owen. They, they do seem to be going that way with the Game Pass, etc. Yeah. Where they're definitely focusing on this sort of like digital, like Netflix esque sort of thing. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, that's, it's definitely a market for I think the Game Pass is cool. The Game Pass is really if there was, good. Like, oh. I would get it if the games, particularly on there, aren't my interest, but if they were, then I would, I would 100% get it. Yeah. 
I'm a bit. I'm a big fan of it. I've been making some use of it. And Rob, we do need to finish Gears of War yeah. at some point. Yeah. I'll, I'll sc- schedule something in my diary. <laughs> what you want Friday. me to schedule something in your diary, or yeah, Fr- Friday or Saturday night. Well, fr- now Friday and Saturday night are both. They're both taken this week. Okay. Well, we'll, <laughs> well, we'll start. We'll, we'll start reconvene. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll we right. will sort them. We'll sort it. Cool. So we'll see what happens with that. Kind of, I would say, good news anyway. Possibly yep. with a sort of dark undertone that Owen has <laughs> Owen has brought to light. What? <laughs> the the dark undertone of them. Oh, their own I thought you were on their, about the next thing. Original. I was. Uh, oh, right. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Talking about the next thing, that is the fact that EA will not have um, a press conference this year. I don't know if anyone watched the EA Play conference last year. It was terrible. <laughs> don't remember it if I did. Nope. Um, so basically it was just the usual, the way EA do it, where you get the really... Um, it was hosted by Andrea Renee, who's sort of like an internet personality. She was fine. But then they got a lot of, like, the sort of... You know that CEO, that, that kind of... He's a bit... I don't know, a bit iffy, the CEO of EA, and he was on talking about, you know, rubbish that no one's interested in. Um, they didn't show too much gameplay, they just showed trailers, and then they did that big sit-down thing with Anthem, where they brought, like, three or four people up on stage, like, developers, and just had, like, a sit-down talk about the game and showed off some, oh, like, the first gameplay. I, yeah, I seem to remember this now. Yeah, um, and they also did a very weird thing where they announced the name of the uh, Respawn Star Wars game, the Jedi one, Fallen Order. They just cut to a guy, like the developer of it, in the crowd. And he was like, <laughs> he was just in the crowd with Andrea Renee. And she was like, oh, have you got something to tell us? And he was like, yeah, this Star Wars game, this huge deal is <laughs> called this. We have nothing else to tell you, but here you go. And everyone in the crowd was like, cool. Why is, <laughs> why is, why is this happening? Why isn't it like on stage in like a cool like CGI trailer or whatever? But it was very weird. So basically they've, They've realised this and said that they're not doing it next year or this year. And it will just be multiple live streams that will uh, during the first two days of the event with more gameplay and more insights from the teams making the games. Okay. Which is good, I think, for, for people like us who just watch it. We don't go to yeah. E3, obviously. Yeah, it seems like it, it makes it worse for the people who go there, but better for the people who can't make it. Yeah. which it, Maybe it's a trend. Do you think people like Obviously, Sony out there this year. Do you think that companies are just realizing that they don't need to do this anymore? Yeah, like they can just have their own thing, like PlayStation Experience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, they can pull yeah, and the, the in. Nintendo Directs, things like that. Yeah, as well. exactly, exactly. Yeah, because Nintendo did it. I think they did it first, didn't they? They just said, like, yeah, "Now we're just doing they, a live stream instead." Yep, they did. That was I don't know two or three years ago. Which works perfectly fine for for people watching, which yeah. is the vast majority of people. In fact, it's better that way when it's just sort of like trail. Remember when Sony did that really good conference where it's just like it was trailer just tra- trailer. Yeah, that was tra- yeah. that was still the best one that I've seen. Yeah, and that, that that and was just... a conference, wasn't it? But it wasn't really a conference. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no one came out and talked for ten minutes about boring stuff that no one's interested in. Yeah, it was just, just showed just games. trailers. That was sick. Yeah, we're, which is if we're this all is in. What, we're yeah, all in planning. your room, weren't we, for that one? Think. Yeah, yeah, we all watched it. Yeah. It was an absolute hype moment. Got an incredible curry. Yeah. Can't remember where we from. Did. We did. Uh, Red Chili Grill. Shout out oh. if you want to. If you want to sponsor us, Red Chili Grill. Um, How do you we remember that? For <laughs> I'm the only person in a receiving range of any uh, <laughs> swag, but if you want to send me a few bags of of uh, Vindaloo's, by all means, ruin <laughs> my life. Just just bags of Vindaloo's. Bags just of Vindaloo. <laughs> But yeah, I think this is good news for EA, right? We, everyone always chips on EA, but this is a good step, right? Yeah, yeah I think I'd, so. I'm not, I'm not against it. I do quite like conferences, but I think this is... like Over the past few years, there has been a certain decline in quality of them. So, yeah. so I think it, it's nice to see that people are taking a step back and be like, take, taking a slightly different route, seeing it's working for other companies and following after them. So, yeah. I, I do like the conferences, but I like them for the trailers. Yeah, they, they took away from the games and them really and made it about like the business in a way. Yeah. But I do like the crowd reactions though. Like, that's that's yeah. my part as well. Which I guess you lose with this sort of thing. Mm. But I mean, I guess good. 
good stuff. I mean, eventually, I reckon in like two years, no one will be A3. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll I, uh, just be all online. Yeah, pretty much. I think so. You don't need to. Unless, uh, unless... You needed press passes, don't you? To get there normally. Or well, Not anymore. Get... You, no, you used, used to. to. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But well, you can't get into like the... Um, the conferences without like being a press member or whatever. Yeah. But you can but now you go could, to the you, show as, yeah. as a person. And you could go so, to like the show floor and stuff, but not the actual conferences. Yeah. But the show floor always I, happened like a couple of days after the conferences, didn't correct, it? Correct, yeah. Correct. I, I think it'll be telling if Sony are back next year. Like, are they just taking the year off for because they've got nothing to show and they're making like they're planning the PS five launch and they'll be back next year. If they skip next year again, I think that is when you know the E3 is pretty much on the way down. Hmm. Cool. Let's uh, let's talk about a game that is obviously not going to go any away anytime soon. This is uh, Apex Legends, which we seem to talk about every week. This so time, it's a big game. It is. This time, um, basically, season one, the battle pass is rumored to be launching today or this week at least. Um, with a new hero, a new legend, sorry, yep. uh, Octane. So I don't have too much to talk about this. I mean, it, it costs 950 Apex coins, if that means anything to you. I've not played um, the game, so I don't that, know how much That's that good because the, a tenner is like, no, like a thousand is like a certain amount and everyone was kicking off because they priced them at 1,200, um, meaning oh, that you'd see, have to yeah, buy yeah, two, yeah. Um, which people were really mad at. So the fact that it's just under that is a bit, it's a lot nicer. Yeah. Although it's still not on it, which means people have fifty left over, and that won't be enough to buy anything, so they'll have to buy stuff. So <laughs> well, it's just no, the same no, no, thing, no, no, but... no. So what you do is, I'm sure assur- this is season one, yeah. So come mm-hmm. come season ten, you'd have saved up five hundred. Oh, you get a free. You get and you can. It, a free oh yeah. Or you could. You in can twenty seasons. Buy something with that. In twenty seasons. Or yeah. well, like eighteen. <laughs> you can or get so. a free battle pass. Yeah. You know what? Not, not scummy at all. Two hundred pound in the game. It's the subway yeah. sandwich way of doing it. Spend what? 100 quid, here's a free sandwich. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. The 50 leftovers, this... you can't do anything with it, but yeah, you can save up over time if you are an avid fan of the game. Yeah. That's yeah. still better than forcing people to buy basically a whole other lot that they not didn't necessarily want. Yeah. Do we think that this game is, is the, the new big, big boy, or is Fortnite still the uh, going to hold on? Fortnite is four times its viewership on Twitch still. Yeah. Yeah, I don't th- I don't think Fortnite's going anywhere, but this this game people seem to like it. I don't know if it was just a hype at the time. Uh, I, I think it's still it's, it's still it's, pretty solid. I think it's it's dropped a little bit obviously, but it's still pretty solid and this season pass will pick it back up now. Yeah. It's not the Fortnite killer that people were saying it was when it first came onto the scene though. It's No, but it's definitely pulling people away from it. It is, but it doesn't seem that way. Like Fortnite is still far and ahead the biggest thing on Twitch. It's just you don't hear well, about it as much anymore. Yeah, but you gotta remember it they they appeal to slightly different audiences. Like I feel that like Apex is a yeah. more mature audience, whereas Fortnite is yeah. is just a way bigger audience, like anyone can pick up and play it. Whereas people with Apex they feel it's a bit more mature, it's a bit it's a bit harder, I'd say, if you exclude the whole building thing. Yeah. Um, there's more skill. There's more skill um, involved in actually needing to kill someone, um, and the looting, like all the guns, feel slightly different. Uh, it's first person as well, so people who don't like first persons aren't going to play it. Um, so yeah, Apex was built on the idea that there was some people too stingy to buy Black Ops uh, for Blackout, but they would spend lots of money on microtransactions if they got a free game. I feel. Did you? I was going to say, did you read that from somewhere, or is that your opinion? That's my opinion. Right. It's just they're like, oh, we've got this game that uh, everyone really wants, but they're like, oh, I don't want to pay forty quid for it. If we release a free version with like a ten worth of microtransactions, they'll get hooked and spend way more. Let's do that. That's pretty much the model for the game industry in general. I was going to say, it? yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty standard. It's basically just Overwatch, isn't it? But in battle royale form. Well, you see, people have compared it to Overwatch, and I I understand where that comes from. Like, you've got all every all these legends of different abilities and things like that and you have an ultimate and so but it's like you it's you can't really compare the two. Obviously not in like a in like a You can't have a direct comparison gameplay. at least. But, there but is, they've definitely 
the hero sort of thing is, is is new to the battle royale genre, I believe. I think unless unless Blackout did that, I feel like Blackout did yeah. it, but not not in a big way. Like it was a thing, but it, it, it was also quite, didn't really have an how, effect. Yeah, I don't know if it was actually gameplay affecting who you picked in Blackout. Yeah, um, it's just like build. Yeah, it was yeah. just it was just what you looked like and things. I don't I don't I've I've played it once. I don't remember it. Yeah, but. we're not really a battle royale. We we played a lot of PUBG when it first came out, but because it's the only good battle royale. <laughs> but yeah, I, well, none of them are. There's no such thing as a good battle royale, in my opinion. No. I just I <laughs> my, hate all of them. I my hundred hours in PUBG, so you've always. I I had a good we had a good time with PUBG, but it's just it gets old. Yeah, no, it really after, does. After so many hours, there was a single moment in PUBG where I got a double kill and was over the moon, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> That's all I They're got. Definitely not for everyone. I think the people yeah. who get that like that drive from those moments and like they really get it, they're the ones who stick with battle royales because it's it's one of the f- few sort of genres that can really get get you so so up from a game from situations like that. I think it's because right. you, you put so much into it. Like, whereas in, like Call of Duty, you die, you just go back. You know, there's no squeaky bum time in Call of Duty. Squeaky. Yeah, you, you've top. got more to lose, I guess, in a yeah. battle royale game. Well, it feels like that in PUBG. It's not so bad in Fortnite because you can queue up again very quickly. Yeah. But in PUBG, if you lose, you, you're waiting for the yeah. game to load and <laughs> render everything for two minutes. That's a, that's another thing about Apex. Actually, it it's performed really well on most people's um, yeah, systems, very well made. as opposed to PUBG and even like I think like H one C one and things like that. Oh yeah. So all, none, none of them one of them run like dog shit. Even um I think there was the the armor battle royale, which I think was that also was pretty, pretty Yeah, which was random. like what yeah, which was one of the OG ones. Um but again it's just, a lot of the games just didn't run well. Whereas now yeah. now it's become a thing. I think a lot of people liked the Call of Duty one because it was a high quality performed pretty yeah, well. Correct, yeah. Um so to see this one come like Fortnite as well. It it run it ran well, but it's not difficult to make a game run well in Unreal. Um, yeah, it wasn't like... Fortnite was never like a AAA experience. No. I remember looking at Fortnite when it was... Um, when it first got announced as the sort of like zombie tower defense game. Yeah, yeah. I was I was proper hyped for that. And then no one I knew wanted to get it. <laughs> it's and it's then still so, there. You know, I know, it's, it's still there, but no one plays it. And that's what I no. looked forward to. And then, yeah, everyone just... It, it released this battle royale mode and everyone went crazy for it. Yeah. So. That's, and then the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> the world changed. Definitely literally. did. War has changed. No, oh, come on. I'm man. sure war that's the start to something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. War's, war never changes. No, no, it's war. no, no. It's war, war has changed. changed. It's war, yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, yeah, one of them, I knew something said it. <laughs> right, okay. Um, we'll move on. We're going to talk about some, briefly uh, what's out this week. If Connor, if Connor was here, he could talk more about One Piece World Seeker, which I'm sure none of us here have anything to say about. I, I saw a trailer for it and it looked okay, um, uh, but I don't. You know, is it an open world? One yeah, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, he was open world. About that. Open world. So, it so looked alright. It, it was very sort of like um, you had lots of abilities and stuff, and it was like skill trees or something like that. It looked interesting. I don't know. Oh uh, well. Do we do we ask the question is if it's an RPG? <laughs> Who knows? I, I literally don't know anything <laughs> about the game. I feel like they've took the um, I don't know if everyone played like the Naruto games, the fighting ones where they had like you could run around K- Konoha, the Leaf Village. Is that the, the Naruto ship in Ultimate Ninja Storm Four? Or yeah, three, yeah, it might have been. Or Revolution? Might, might have been. Not sure. Didn't didn't play them. But I feel like they took that sort of gameplay and then made it into a world. And that's what everyone's been asking for for every anime game since the start of time, <laughs> and they've just never done it. They're doing it with Dragon Ball now as well, aren't they? Yeah. That RPG. Well, they did it with Dragon Ball and Game Boy Advance. Legacy of Goku. It was incredible. <laughs> the best <laughs> Dragon Ball game there is. There are no good Dragon Ball games. I don't think I've ever played a Dragon Ball game. Getting it later, funny, boys. It? Uh, so... Dissidia PC free edition is mm. also out today. Apparently, does anyone want to talk about this? Oh, you, oh. you caught my attention with free. I'll say it's it's a free it's a fighting game. 
Um, I think you have like teams of three, um, and they're all Final Fantasy characters from across all the games, as far as I remember. Um, all with unique fighting styles, things like like a classic sort of um, fighting game recipe. I think it's not two D, so it's like a three D fighter. It is three D, yeah. Um, At least the PSP version was. Yeah, and I th- I think it it's um it's kind of different because you have your um your limit break and stuff like that, um which I don't I don't know if it's similar to any other fight. I think I think Tekken also is it Tekken? It might I don't know if it's Tekken. It might not be Tekken, but one you build up like gauges and you can yeah. the higher the gauges, the more powerful your special is on it. And so it's got yeah. that sort mm-hmm. of stuff in it. It looks all right. It looks yeah. pretty cool. And the reason that it was put me off it was that it wasn't free. Um, <laughs> it's a two. It, the game's about two years old now. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's going having like a free to play um, or a free edition rather than free to play because you still yeah. can pay for starter. There's like starter packs and things like that, and you can unlock the full game. Because um, in the free edition, there's no story as well. If I remember. Yeah. Um, so you just get four heroes each week, and they change each week, and then. So you can just okay. play this at infinitum, but the I think the idea is is you they won't be able, they'll play it for about two three weeks and they'll be like I really like this game, but I want to get my favorite Final Fantasy character, and then they'll go out and yeah. they'll spend the twenty two quid, and all you know Square have to do is give them four characters for free, and if they don't yeah. buy it, then so be it. I think it's a decent way to get um, people into the series because. I've I've never heard anything bad about the city games. Excuse me. Like p- everyone who plays them enjoys them. They might not be the best games, but everyone is, seems to enjoy them that I've spoken to about them. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't like because I, I had the um, first PSP one. Um, I really liked the the actual versus enemies, but I ran into the the fighting game problem where everyone online was really really very good. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I think that's a. It, I think it was mostly on handhelds as well. I don't yeah. think it, it was never it was on, on a console or PC. Until, it was on PSP, like, then Vita, and then it was on PS4, I think. I think this NT maybe. version was on PS4. Right, okay. Um, maybe. But, yeah, I mean, I might I might pick it up. I, th- I think now is the best time to pick it up because there'll be tons of people who aren't very good playing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think definitely, if you give it a month... There's no point playing the free edition. Cause well, there will still get, be yeah, there, it will still be point playing the free edition. Yeah, if you're good at fighting games, but like, if you well, <laughs> you don't even necessarily be good, need to be good. Like you would probably still enjoy it. Yeah, like depends you, how the ranking is done. To be fair, I suppose yeah, there's that. Um, so the next game that's out this week, unless Owen, oh, you got something? To no, no, no. Or? I was. It's fine. Continue. So the next game that's out this week, we are going to play is an RPG with, and that's the Division Two. Um, this is a game, obviously a sequel to the original. Came out probably about four four years ago, or something now, maybe um, three three years yeah, ago. Yeah, because we were in our second year of university. Yeah, se- oh, well, well se- second, second slash year third of official. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were in so, we were in <laughs> what, we were in year t- year two, year two, yeah, two of three. So yeah, about three years ago. Um, the first game was good. It was um. I think it's one of those that like it got a lot better as it went on, mm. sort of evolved, yeah. as a lot of Ubisoft games do, like For Honor, etc. Um, get better over time, and um, I've heard really good things about this one. But basically, instead of you know how Destiny Two jumped from Destiny One was full of content, and then Destiny Two like lost it all again. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that Division Two is not like that; that it carries on with the amount of content that they had at the end of Division's life cycle, oh, right, okay. which is good news. Um, I. I've heard just nothing, but this game is better than Division in every level. It's improved exact on what people wanted to. Do the mirrors reflect light in real I'm not time? sure. That's that's going to be my was, first yeah. uh, <laughs> experience. I would think at this point, 2019, <laughs> RTX, you'd think RTX it, 2080. You'd think in 2016 it would do it. Well, it's not even but, yeah. that the mirror didn't reflect light. It just didn't work. Like, reflect, the mirror just didn't it work. Reflected, <laughs> it reflected... It sort of... Um, it, it basically copied the camera. Yeah. It it just re- yeah. so yeah. You, instead of looking in a mirror and looking at your face, you were looking at the back of your head. <laughs> it's like yeah. what? <laughs> and because, apparently that was because it it doesn't. If you do that, it doesn't have to render it again. It can just copy that that same sort of thing that's on the screen and put it there. 
right? Fair Instead enough. of having to render a completely separate angle, you know, to, but it's to, very, it, to actually reflect very it. very immersion breaking when you look in a it mirror was. and expect to see your face. Yeah, from you a, especially a triple game, A game. Yeah. yeah, a game where you can close car doors by crouching next to them. It does it automatically. You would think that yeah. the mirrors well, yeah, and, would work. I, and it wasn't like I was playing on low graphics at the time. It was, <laughs> I, was, I think I was on... Like the second highest or highest, I don't yeah, remember. You had, a, you had a good card as well. That yeah. Point, didn't you? Like, well, what would, it's like a nine eighty, wasn't it, or something? Did I have the Did I have the computer I've got now? Have I had a new computer? I have I had a new computer since? I'm not I sure. I don't think you, I did. No, yeah, I, I got. It is, I bought. I bought this was, one at that house. So yeah, and it had Tomb Raider. You got Tomb Raider at the same time. Yeah, I'm pretty so, yeah, sure you had a nine eighty. Yeah, so it'd be this one, the nine eighty Ti. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good card. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's no excuses really for that game, but anyway, the second one looks good. Um, is everyone aware of the, the game and how it plays? Yeah, yeah, I've played the first one, really enjoyed it. What I hated about it is that I had no one to play it with because I was the only yeah. one on you who bought it on PC. Yeah, Every, so this everyone time, else me, got me it on and console. Sam are, me and Sam are definitely buying this one on Friday. Good. Uh, we'll see if we can get one more person on board. Well, I I, but, I want it, but I'm not. Uh, I'm out. I've got a meal on. Friday, so Oof. I'll be back a little bit later. Oof, that's all right. We can just catch up. Okay. Um, is it an RPG in the Ed Laws? Um, no. wait, wait, wait. You've got your own. You can create your own character. Correct. Um. Oh. Mm. Can, can you talk to NPCs and change stories? I don't think. I so. don't know about change stories, but you can like in in the first one at least. If some there's like NPCs that were asking you for stuff, like I don't know, a bit of chocolate or something and you could choose could you, you could choose not to give it them and just walk, walk off okay so there is some choice there um, i feel like a lot of the npcs will immediately open fire though and you don't you can't you know roll a 20 and get that natural charisma critical and talk them into your side so i'm gonna say it's yeah. not an rpg it's not an rpg because uh, no- you can't critical roll on charisma yeah <laughs> and you can't destroy the world because it's already destroyed so, well, oh, that's a, it'll be interesting. To, is it? That's a, is it direct? I never finished the first one, so I don't. I believe it's just a direct sequel. You play as a completely new character. You don't play as like you, the agent you were in the last one. Yeah, because I remember there was. Um, what I'm trying to remember about the first one is there was like a, a virus on the notes, wasn't there? On the money, and that yeah, was I like, so. um, I don't know, hurting people or something, killing people. Yeah, and then there was like the quarantine zones, and then at some point there was the. The the agents went in first, and you were like the second lot of agents to go in, weren't you? And yeah, some really of the so. first ones went rogue, which is what the whole yeah, um, yeah. dark zone thing, and where you could go rogue was about, which was pretty now, the cool. The dark zone is super cool. I like I like the dark zone. It was scary, but I liked yeah. it. That is the best, like the best part about that game. Rob, are you are aware of what the dark zone is. Yeah, it's basically the wilderness from RuneScape. <laughs> but, yes, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, so it's just super cool, isn't it? That you can sort of go around and and you can team up with people, sort of. Yeah. You can just like come across yeah. people and, and help, but you they could turn on you at any point. Yeah, I didn't but play they, much. Well, which but is the thing is, they, they had to leave your party first, didn't they? Like if you were, yeah. if you were grouped up, the, you couldn't yeah. friendly fire was off, but you could you could dip yeah. and then shoot them. But you could just meet randoms and not team up, but walk around together, right? Yeah, Yeah. yeah. And I think in which case that was when it got really ropey. The, the the bit that wasn't super fair about that um, was if you were a rogue, you appeared on the map for everyone <laughs> yeah. to see, and ev- yeah, and, it was hard. and anyone who killed you didn't get tagged as being a rogue. Yeah, so you basically just had. So yeah, it was like a skull on your head, like basically RuneScape Wilderness, because <laughs> that's the same with a uh, yeah. If, if you attack someone with a skull, I think they've changed it now. But if you attack someone with a skull, you didn't get skulled. Yeah, I hope it's more about. I hope there's a. Obviously, the reason for doing it is that you can get the loot from the people that you kill. But I hope there's it's more balanced this time. Maybe it even is in Division One at this point. I just not played it. Yeah, maybe. But when we initially played it, but yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Mm. Uh, as long as we have at least three people, I think we'll have a good time. I'm hoping that the so, um, end game grind is feels actually worth it because yeah, at the start of Division One, the 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 upgrades that you got were so minor and far between it was it was really difficult to enjoy the grind so i'm hoping that that changes a bit in this one where the yeah, the, so. the grind stays relevant for a decent amount of time but you do see small continual upgrades rather than just one big one that you never upgrade again 
Yeah, yeah. That's uh, the problem with most of these sort of games, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like the end game and looting and stuff. Yeah. Like Anthem, I, I believe once you've completed like the story, there's not really much to do end game wise. Yeah. But I'm hearing the opposite for this, so hopefully it's good. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. So that's out next week or this week. Let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Um, Rob, we'll start with you, and we'll start with a game called For the King. Yep. So this is a, a game that my my uh, other friend. I have those. Uh, Wait, asked me. <laughs> yeah, I know it's mad. Got, I've got at least one. Um, so my friend Michael asked me to play, uh, and I had no idea what it was. He just described it as a hex-based um, RPG, sort of like a tabletop game. And mm-hmm. it, it is, that's what it is. Um, so it, it plays a bit like Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, I don't know if you played that. But um, no. you've got like a little hex-based map. Um, you randomly sort of spawn as a character, um, and then it's turn-based combat. And you just sort of uh, do a player versus enemy campaign um, in a sort of RPG world. Played it for about three hours. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, the graphics, the art style is like really, really nice. It's low poly, but it, it looks um, not not cute, but I don't know. It's just it's bright and colourful, and it's uh, it's fun. If you like uh, real RPGs, uh, it's not one of them because. As far as I'm aware, you can't roll charisma at the start of a fight. Sometimes you do have to fight people. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for I think I got it for two pound on G two A. Pretty good. Uh-huh. Definitely get my money's worth. <laughs> Should consider it if uh, you got two pound lying around and you got nothing to do. And Monster Hunter World is another game that we've both played a little bit of. Yeah. You you played more more than me recently. Um, great game. Very Incredible game. very good game. We played it originally on PlayStation, but we've we've all got it again recently on PC. Mm-hmm. And this game is just great, isn't it? <laughs> it's just really fun. I think yeah, exactly. One of the main things they did going from um, like the PSP versions to the the PC and PS4 version was it's still grindy, but really it's only grindy if you want it to be. Uh, yeah, sense, I agree. You can play the majority of the game without grinding. And just get the you know the cool armor, and as long as you're good enough, it's it's not a th- uh, you know it's not a problem. But the grind's still there for people who want to get at one of every weapon. Or yeah, I'm that sort of person. Yeah, I've like to to get like the water effect, you know, like the different effects per weapon yeah. and stuff like that. I think that's that's cool. Yeah, I mean that's still incredibly grindy. I think I I feel like it's almost rigged so that you always get like that on like that one item that's really annoying to get early on and you get at least one of them so you can make at least one weapon but if you want to make a second one then it's a bit more grindy yeah i can see that mm-hmm. um but it's just it's, really fun it's incredible how they've got like how many different like sort of combat styles with dif- with the different weapons in the game and it all works mm. and it's all fun apart from like i've never played the um the guy like the bagpipes yeah well <laughs> but, but- the bagpipes is really, really useful um, if you if you in a group because you can buff everyone around him yeah. and you can still fight. I think a lot of the earlier like games weapons are a bit dull, um, like the sword and shield. I, I don't think they ever got an upgrade, and I've not used it since the first game, so maybe it's really good. But like that and the, the original lance, it's a bit, a bit terrible. The uh, switch yeah. axe is the best weapon. In that yeah, that's game. what I'm using currently. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's cool. It's the I only, you'll find the the only weapons I've ever. I'll go away. It's the best weapon. <laughs> oh, God. Don't, no, on, don't start. What what weapons are you? Oh, just the switch. The switch axe. It's it's the only. Just, yeah, 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 that's the only one I've ever used in Monster Hunter games. Just because it's the only one that I knew the the set of, and yeah, the yeah. only one I really got used to using. Um, I tried it. You- I tried a few, but they, I just got on with the switch axe. And then, yeah, I do like yeah, it. When it was on uh, PlayStation, I was playing it with Connor, um, and <laughs> we found out that I can do like an upswing with it. And if he's oh, in front, yeah. if he's in front of me, I forgot it, it does I forgot it does that. a friendly knock up, and he can then mount the monster. We need to try that later, Rob. Actually, well, I, I've been using the insect glaive, so it's a bit useless for me because I yeah. You know, well, that's that's what that's what Connor was using at the time. 
Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, then, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's, to be fair, it's probably easier with the insect glaive because if you get knocked in the air, you can then do an evade or a or a dash attack with the insect glaive. Yeah, I completely forgot about that one. That's, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try that. If you if you can find it, there's a Reddit clip of it. It's a Reddit. Yeah, I remember you <laughs> posting on Reddit. Yeah, um, I've been using. I I used the hammer on PlayStation, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, using the switch axe, I'm kind of tempted to try the bagpipes now, <laughs> just to see what it's like. Like, see how good the buffs are and stuff. Um, because I'm always that sort of person in in like a game like this. I like being the sort of support buff person. But I'll um, I might try it out and see what it's like. But overall, great game. We're trying to get caught up for the DLC, aren't we? Yeah, that's the plan. We should do it. Yeah. So, uh, cool. I was say, there's only like you know, two hundred hours of content minimum and like eight hundred max, <laughs> eight hundred like you know average Dead before only. I spawn. I'm sure, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. So, Owen, we've got Forza Horizon 4 down here. Yep. Is this a g- 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 game pass? It is a g- 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 game pass. Basically, started playing it after last time I was on the podcast and you asked what the top selling Xbox exclusives yeah, yeah, yeah. are. And I, I had already played Forza Horizon 3 and just hadn't yet played 4. And then, mm-hmm. obviously, me and Rob had got the game pass. Or, well, I'd got it for Sea of Thieves. And then Gears of yep. War, and it was on, it was there available. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a go. Mm-hmm. And I've reached the end game in it now. And there's like daily missions, and um, it has okay. like wow, that's cool. weekly. It, it does the dynamic seasons, so every week the season rotates to the next season. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And I've just I've just been really enjoying it. Slowly getting my levels up. I'm trying trying to play more online than offline now. Um, ended yep. up. Go, I was playing on, I think I, I started the game on like the normal difficulty and then e- every like 20 races or so it said, oh, you're, you're winning too easily. Do you want to up the difficulty? <laughs> I ended up on pro, won an- another few games, like eventually like pro is really difficult. And then it said, oh, you're winning too easily. Do you want to go against, uh, oh, the hardest difficulty? I'm trying, unbeatable. It's called unbeatable, the hardest difficulty. Oh, and I don't think I've won one yet. <laughs> I think I think, called that. I think the best I've done is third, <laughs> and it's really difficult. So I'm enjoying that. Um, like just, uh, it's like I don't feel like I'm getting absolutely crushed, but I'm definitely getting absolutely crushed. Like yeah. so, it's, it's yeah. Experience. So it's good to feel like you're not getting crushed, but know that you are. If that makes <laughs> sense, like yeah, it's not it. it's not just like straight up like Sam against Dark Souls where. He knows he's getting crushed and he feels fucking awful for it. Oh, language yeah. again, sorry. Um, but where I'm getting beat, but I feel like next time I'll do it, and just I've, yeah, yeah, I've felt I felt good. like that every time and just haven't done it. So it's just, it's it's a real feel good, and I I do really like racing games. Um, so it it, and it and is a it's a genuinely really good one. Um, there's something that I, I, I like about that is seasons like yeah. not enough games do this seasons thing seasons is, do you remember seasons the, which, is sick which, which Pokemon was it that did this it was incredible do you remember it was um, was it was it black it wasn't black and white was it I don't think it was black it was and white was it the one at the X weather station I'm not sure but it had like a deer Pokemon that would change depending De- on the um, dealing yeah I, uh, yeah maybe that would change depending on the season Dealing and, st- and uh, it evolved into something. I can't remember what it's evolved. It must have been X and Y, right? Um, I'm trying to find out. Uh, Generation anyway, the, five apparently. Was... So yeah, it would have been black and white. Oh, oh, in that case, black and white. That was the best feature of black and white. Because <laughs> because I remember that was sort of like the same change as when gold and silver it would go to night time on like the game clock, so you would play it in bed. And it'll be night, and everything will look sick. Like you go into Goldenrod City, and um, it'll it be lit up. Mm. Like it's the same effect when they start when they added seasons to black and white. I assume it's just like it's super cool. I don't understand why games don't do that. It changes everything up. It, it makes it fresh. Mm. Like does I'm assuming the seasons change how the game controls? Yeah. So um, uh, spring there's a quite a bit of rain. Um, yeah. In Summer, it's it's you, you mostly dry, so it's it's pretty all right. Yeah, the yeah. snow is all in winter; it's awesome and awful <laughs> at the same time. Like I can imagine the uh, the um I'm trying to think the expedition is it the, no oh, yeah I think it's like the expedition races which are like the off roady kind of trails. Um, yeah. 
where you do it in like massive trucks or four B fours and things like that. Like they're sick. Um, they're my favorite kind. Um, and then autumn, uh, I think autumn's basically similar to summer where not much really happens, but it just, mm-hmm. everything looks completely different. Like the sun, yeah. the, the, the sun and the light in the game is awesome. Like the, uh, I think it's just graphics wise. The game is so, so pretty. Um, mm. but yeah, uh, like I say, the, the main difference is like the, the rain making it really difficult. Oh, and in the winter, like the lakes, um, go all solid as well. And some oh, of them, really? ha- there, there's like some islands in the middle of one, of, well, I think there's one island in the middle of the big lake, which you can only get to in the winter. You just drive across That's the cool. ice. Um, so it's cool. It's a racing game, but it, it's stuff like that in it, which yeah. is awesome. Well, it's, it's open world as well. So it's like, yeah. it's like bur- burnout paradise where there's like billboards and stuff to smash and yeah. things like that. Uh, a lot of, a lot of different things to do. Yeah. yeah. The horizon series is definitely my favorite. Like after Need for Speed kind of died out a bit. Yeah. I still would probably prefer a burnout game because the difference is the burnout games are more arcadey races and I do yeah, I yeah. do prefer arcadey races to simulation races, but I think Horizon has just the right mix of the two. It's mm-hmm. like it is arcadey, but it is it like the cars handle incredibly well. Um like yeah. in like in terms of realism. Like you can't just plow around a corner at sixty miles an hour. Like you've got to, you got to actually use your brakes, which I'm sure uh, Rob found out when he uh, started playing. <laughs> no, you don't have to use your brakes. You just got to like not drive as fast. I learned it. <laughs> I still, I, I don't ever use my brakes in those games. I just let go like earlier and then coast. That's not not what you should be doing. Well, I'm not very good at them. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like to use uh, the brakes. I ain't no bitch. So. um I've been playing Monster Hunter World, but I've also been playing Arkham Asylum. Is Has it, anybody that, else that, here played Arkham Asylum? That must Asylum? be like your second or third playthrough, right? Oh, f- uh, I've played it like four times. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I've, I've played it. Have you? Yeah. Never, t- you never to it? 100%, played... but I've completed the story. I tried to do 100%, but the Riddler trophies, uh, I just couldn't figure out where some of them were. See, see, this, I feel like I can 100% Arkham Asylum. But I can't do it with like City and Night and Origins because that's when it gets ridiculous. City is. But I feel like Arkham Asylum is. No, some of the Riddler trophies in Asylum are ridiculous. I'm gonna try, but I mean, I just need to say that this is this is a perfect video game. It's It's an easy ten out of ten. It's up there. It is. It it is very good. Like they've set out to create a Batman video game. There's literally nothing. It's the best one in the series, I think. Like yeah, as absolutely. much as City is great, like City is amazing. Okay. I preferred City out of the two. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people do, but Asylum is just like perfect because it's so like concise and it just knows mm. what it's trying to do. It's, it's right. really the tight combat game. is incredible. Yeah, combat's incredible. The characters are great. Story's great. It it's it's that cliche <laughs> that if you feel like Batman, it does it literally it, you are Batman in that game. It does have one downside. Go on. And that's the ending. Yeah, the last boss is a, a bit bad. It's I'm trying really to bad. remember the last boss in that. Because I always Joker. get... It's... I know it's Joker, but one of the uh, one of them is Joker and he... Um, you're in like the... You're on like the roof and there's like... Uh, yeah, that's the one. Right. That's is the last, that the, is that the, the right boss. one? Uh, I'm thinking yeah. of the right... Because I, I know Joker... There's a Joker fight in City, which I think again is the last one, but that might be in like a theatre or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's 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 city. Wow, my the one, my memory the, is on point today. <laughs> <laughs> the one in Asylum is when he takes this sort of injection and becomes. He becomes a huge, huge doesn't he? Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bad. That's the only downside to the entire yeah. game. Like the game is is a masterpiece. It's perfect, apart from that. So I'm just I'm not going to count that. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, All right. It's just like it's exactly what like it paved the way, didn't it, for basically everything else. Yeah. The combat has been in a million other games. Detective mode is in a million other games. Well, yeah, it's like the Spider-Man game that's just come out is basically yeah. Arkham City, but with Spider-Man. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does Does Spider-Man have detective mode? I'm trying to remember. Um, I think he doesn't. But you not not quite M- MJ a does. Yeah, not quite detective mode, but yeah, there is a. Uh... But he does. He has the stealth stuff where yeah. he can like yeah. pull someone up from the balcony and stuff yeah. like that. God, that's so good. And everyone like just being able to everyone rated the Spider-Man game as well, but it is just like a a reskin of Arkham Asylum. 
uh, yeah, it, it definitely to, a, uses... to an extent. To an extent, it builds upon it. Yeah, it's got it the web swinging. That's what makes yeah, it yeah. good. There's yeah, not been a good ba- Spider-Man Batman game had, web swinging. Batman had the grappling in, and he could grapple and glide. So that's basically web now, swinging. Now, this is something I do want to talk about: is that that feels very clunky in city or in much, asylum? Uh, in in asylum, I didn't know it was in. It asylum. feels it. It feels clunky. Um, still perfect. But, it's still, yeah, still a perfect game because Batman is a clunky. He's a bit clunkier than Spider Man. Like, I mean, from coming af- from Spider Man, mm-hmm. you feel a lot heavier as Batman, which might be the intent. So, well, yeah, you got to remember, Sp- Spider Man's like a kid, yeah, and Batman. So, Batman's a huge guy in a massive suit with <laughs> loads of gadgets on him at all, all times. Yeah. So, ten out of ten. If Rocksteady aren't making Batman Beyond, I'm going to be so pissed. I really want them to be making Batman Beyond, but. I feel like they're making some lame Superman game. One of the worst characters Man of all time. Man of Steel. Yeah. But anyway, um, that is that is it, I think, for the podcast. Unless anyone else has got anything they want to uh, uh, throw in before we, no, we sign off. No, I don't off. have anything specific. No. Oh, I um, actually, yeah, I've got one thing. Some yeah. of the viewers who are watching, not listening, may have noticed that there is a uh, a character um, in the like, in behind me. And this I'm just is gonna, I'm just going to point him out. On he, he sat right over there, being really good on my bed. Um, is this is this a body pillow? It is no, it's not a body pillow. It <laughs> is it is a um, little frost wolf pup, which is a uh, it's a World of Warcraft monster, and mm-hmm. they released teddies of them for BlizzCon. I think this one's I got from BlizzCon 2016 or 17, and he's hella cute. And I've just left him there watching the podcast. So uh, he doesn't have a name yet. Like, I've never named him. So I'm hoping that if anyone's listening or wants to comment or whatever, we'll uh, we'll give him a decent name. I'm not going to take the <laughs> I'm not going to take the first name. But if there's some decent uh, if there's some decent what's it called options to choose from, I might uh, I might consider one. So Jedediah. Brilliant. I'm not I'm not taking so, uh, any suggestions from people in the Gallagher. So. That's oh, fucking great. rude. Great. Wow. Un- oh, well. So, um, unless it just happens to be what someone else thinks. Jedediah. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, Jedediah. Yeah. So, Owen, uh, I guess sign off. Is there anything anything you want to plug? Um, Not really, just the usual. Um, My Twitter. Uh, Wait, what was it? This It was Owen ZZZ1, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Correct, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Um. Make sure you watch uh, the streams, guys. Come on. Watch our streams. Yeah, twitch.tv forward slash gargo boys. Yep. Rob? Yeah, just uh, my Twitter, which is uh, T O G E uh, Ness, N E S S. Um, and. <laughs> you could have just. <laughs> yeah, he does this all the time. Yeah. yeah. It, if you are a video watcher, it will be underneath his name. Yeah. Um, underneath his webcam, sorry. And also watch the division stream on Friday. I will be watching because the division stream on Friday. That's a that's a hot take. Is that an announcement? Well, it, you, you said you're all getting on Friday. We usually stream. Yeah, on we th- do. We if not... we have someone capable of streaming, you, you we'll Sam or Owen, I, I, yeah. we, not, we have bad internet. I, no, my my uploads fine. My downloads for where oh, I okay, I maybe struggle. Owen can stream it because I've streamed in the okay. past. It's just, I, yeah, it's just my download. And hope- well, there you go, everyone. We're we're streaming the division on Friday. I'm not. If you want to join, announcement. <laughs> there we are, guys. Yeah, Look forward from to Rob. it. Annou- Rob's announced <laughs> yeah. that we're streaming. I the am now on the Friday. scheduler of the Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day it came, this podcast comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, and um, if you want to follow me, you can on at, on Twitter at Zaka. He's Z A C E R H uh, Y. As usual, watch the podcast as you're already doing. Like the podcast. Share the podcast, review of the podcast on iTunes and Spotify. Subscribe to us if you're not already. Follow us on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Galgo Boys. And apart from that, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Peace.